One more time for the music department, inclusive of the praise team, the praise dancers, the band, the choir. Praise God for the army that God has. How can you fear when you have the army around you? So we praise God for them. Praise God for these mothers in red who came up here to dance. Thank you. Thank you for the witness from the quadruple surgery that was given to Mother Gillian. And she's in here tonight praising the Lord. And God, we thank you for your presence and for your strength and for your love. For this opportunity I have to stand before you to speak to your people. I have not a word absent of you, but with you, God, I can speak as an oracle of yours to your congregation. I ask that you now will word my mouth that I may speak those truths that you have that will take us from this moment onward. It's in your name we pray. It's in your name we pray. It's in your name we give thanks. Amen and amen. God bless you and you may be seated. I was happy when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It's good to see each of you. We're obviously uh, excited of having uh, the pastor, uh, Dowell, and his wife with us. Amen. God bless you. They were part of this ministry for some time until he was called into the pastorate. And uh, he's pastoring a church, and we're glad that they're sharing with us. Pastor Maynard and the Southside Church, we're glad to have you here. We, en we enjoyed the word that you gave to us on uh, this evening. Thank you uh, so very much for giving that word. Uh, the uh, Dr. Hall all the way from Florida. We're glad to have you here uh, as well. I am excited about what God is doing and the things that he's going to do even more. Uh, we have a pastor who uh, married one of our members here just a few uh, days ago and he's here with his two of his children who are here with us on tonight and uh, he's going you're going to be hearing a whole lot from him in terms of uh, his involvement uh, with regard to Tennessee fourth so we're just glad to have him the young lady who finished leading uh, the song uh, Sister Willette Alford uh, is a part. She is a part Amen. of us now. Amen. <laughs> and uh, as such, you will be hearing a lot from her and seeing a lot in her. And we're glad to have her as part of, of our ministry. And yes, God is going to be sending people in, and we're going to receive them. I want to thank the persons who have worked uh, tonight and uh, throughout uh, uh, many days to make sure that we uh, received uh, some spiritual anointing, uh, some excitement, and, uh, and, you know, things don't just happen. There have to be people who are involved. And um, the COO of the church is... Uh, uh, the evangelist Mission Maynard and, 
And uh, she uh, was working with, where's Vanessa Dorby? Um, probably there she is on the back. And anybody else who had anything to do with what we've done here tonight, I'd like for you to either wave your hand or stand or do something so people will see you equally as well if anybody else had anything to do. Amen? Well, just the two of them, just the two of us, <laughs> walking hand in hand. Yeah. <laughs> All right. God bless them. Um, and then, uh, you know, I always do this near the end, and I do it on purpose. But I am blessed of the Lord because of the fragrance of my house and the fragrance of this church um, who is with me in all of what I do, not most of, but all of what I do. And because of her, I am able to excel and I am thankful that I can do that through her. I'm going to ask the Dr. Mary T. Maynard to stand because this is her this is her birthday this is her birthday this is her birthday um, you know it is and it's all you know it's on the 31st at all times and so when you start thinking about what we're going to do on her birthday, well, you know what we're going to do. We're coming to church. <laughs> it's been going on for a long time. Come to church on the 31st and enjoy uh, the things of God. But uh, she is quite a lady within her own right. And we're, amen. <laughs> Now, we do have a, um, time period for me to speak because I'm supposed to be through right before 12 so that we can praise and celebrate God for the old year ending and the new year beginning. And so I'm going to try my best to make sure that we don't go over that in what I have to say. I'm just looking out there. Do I see the, uh, some people out there look like I may know, but I, I, I'm glad for all of you tonight. Amen. That, that's who I thought it was. I, I didn't want to say because he got a beard or something now. I mean, look, 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 look a little different. That, is that the Walker family out there? <laughs> All right. Good. All right. Amen. By Zion. The word of the Lord, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, and unto the utmost part of the earth. With that scripture found in Acts 1 and 8, and that's one of a few scriptures that I will be reading from, I just thank God for uh, that particular scripture. And the reason why I thank God for that particular scripture because it is one that we need uh, to identify with along with the fact that I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. We need to pay attention to those because of the fact that uh, God empowers our success. We are successful because of the empowerment of God. That is our theme for 2020, and I want to talk to you about that because we seem to be people who don't understand that if we are to be successful in our lives, in the things that we need to be, we need to have God, the source of power, working with us. But not only do we need to have him working with us, we need to have him working in us because it is that which is within us that causes us to be 
who we are and to achieve at levels beyond the expectancy of man. We do understand that we are limited uh, in our lives, not because we have not a desire to advance ourselves, but we are limited because of the obstacles that get in our way. All of us have obstacles, all of us have hurdles, all of us have barricades uh, that are before us and the purpose of which is to inhibit us and to cause us not to uh, succeed. But I want to say to you tonight that I found a solution and I found an answer and I found a way to get around the very problems of life that would in, uh, otherwise hinder me from being who God wants me to be. And that is by associating with God, having God in my life to cause me to do what I could not under normal circumstances do. And I wanna say this to you, that you have the great opportunity tonight to excel beyond the thoughts of man and the projection that man may have of you and even the thinking that you are, for whatever reason, unable to. Now, there are real serious problems that we have, and that is that if you don't uh, and you're not born on the right side of the track, if, you don't, if you're not reared in the right neighborhood, if you don't go to the right institution, whether those are institutions of higher learning or those, who, those institutions that are less than the institutions of higher learning. I want you to know that people will say to you that we only expect X things from you because you have not achieved at a level that we feel that you should achieve in order to show that you will be able to accomplish many things. My problem with that is this, that when you relegate to me a certain position within life and say that I cannot climb higher than that, you limit not me, but you limit the God that I serve. You say to me that the God that you serve is not able to take you beyond human expectation. But I know for myself that God does not necessarily rely upon what you do in exercising yourself in your own achievements. What God does is God gives to us an assignment and then God says, if you will allow me, since I gave to you the assignment, I will give to you the energy that you can exercise that will cause you to not only fare well, but to do extremely well and succeed beyond your only own thoughts. How many of you are interested today in going beyond wherever you have been? You may have had a tremendous 2019, but I want to know, is there anybody in the house who's interested in having a better 2020? Is there anybody in the house who wants to do things beyond the level that you have done? The word of the Lord says to us through Jesus himself to his disciples, but you shall receive power. He says that I don't want you to worry about when I'm coming back to catch you up so you can be with me. I know I said that I'm going to prepare a place for you. I know that. And I know that I told you that in my father's house there are many mansions. I told you that. But you're not going anywhere yet. And so I, I, I cannot tell you when I'm coming back. It's not mine to give. Only my father knows when that is. But, but I want you to be equipped while you're here on earth. And you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And the power that you receive 
is so that you might be witnesses unto me. Now he names a few places and then he says, unto the utmost part of the earth. In other words, wherever you go, it's going to be reflected in your ability to perform who I am. Because I want you to allow your light to shine so that men may see your good works and then glorify your Father in heaven. In other words, when you go forth under my anointing, they will give you praise, but I want the glory. They will shout unto you about what you're able to do, but I want the glory. You see, God does not exact a whole lot from us, but he gives us a whole lot. God does, listen, he doesn't take a whole lot from us, but he gives us a whole lot. And I believe that God will do for us what we need him to do. In Isaiah, the 48th chapter and the 12th verse, the word says, hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, my called, I am, I am he, am the first, and I am who? I'm also, I'm also the last. He, God is what? God is the first of what you're about, and God is the last of what you're about. If we go to the 13th verse, and then when we understand that as God moves us, mine hand also have laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has spanned the heavens when I call upon them that they stand up together. In other words, I have the power, I have the ability to do everything that needs to be done uh, for mankind. There is nothing that's too hard for me. I'm the one who made the earth. It's amazing how we don't quite understand that God, listen, that God can do great things for us because he empowers us. How does he empower? To empower us means that he gives to us strength. To empower, to, to empower us means that not only does he give us strength, but he also encourages us. God, listen to me, God brings us to a level where we cannot reach by ourselves. And so what he does, he puts himself into us so that we can do what needs to be done. And, and, and don't worry about, don't worry about what's been done before. Don't worry about how many times God has blessed you before. Don't worry about that because I hear him in the word of the Lord saying, I will do a new thing in you. Uh, and, and yeah, and it shall spring forth, shall you not know it. I'm going to do something new that has not been done. I'm telling you right now, I praise God for 2019. God did some great things in my life. God may have done some great things in your life. But I'm telling you, 2020, if you place your trust in him, if you depend upon him, 2020 is going to be greater than what you have ever experienced in your life. Oh, yes, it is. Somebody says, well, Brother Maynard, one of the things that's happening to me, you don't know the uh, trial that I'm going through right now. You don't know the turbulence in my life right now. You don't know the difficulties that await me right now. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what I've lost. You don't know who I've lost. You don't know these situations and circumstances. And you're absolutely correct. I don't know. I don't know what you've gone through. I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know the pains of your life. I don't know what's causing the pains in your life. I don't know what you've lost. I don't know any of that. You're absolutely right. But I'm going to tell you what I want you to do. I want you to pack up your pain. Pack up your disappointment. Oh, you pack them up, put them in a box. I want you to put in a box all of the hurt, all of the frustration, all of the anger, all of that of 2019. I want you to put it in a box. I want you to seal that box. I want you to tie ropes around that box. And I want you to do like you do when you're moving from an old house into a new house. There's some things you don't take to that new house. You leave them in that old house. Put all that stuff back 
behind you and say, I'm going to a new level. I'm going to a new dimension. I'm going to where I have not been because in 2020, I'm not going to take any junk with me. All the junk have to stay behind me because I'm going to a new horizon. Somewhere in the midst, somewhere in the midst of what I was doing, you might want to say that the word of God came to me in such a great way. And the word of God that came to me in such a great word, way was I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither entered the heart of men the things, the things that God has. You know, every once in a while we say the good things. And it's all right for you to say the good thing, but that's not the Bible. The Bible only says the things. And so sometimes the reason why the Bible says the thing, because every once in a while, some of the things that come into your life are not good. I said, some things are not good. No, 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 no. When the doctors told Mother Gillian that, that she's going to have to have surgery, that was not good information to come into her ear. But what makes it good is this, that with the surgery, God was there. He spoke to her before the surgery. He was with her in the surgery. And he was with her when she came out of the surgery. And tonight she can stand before us and talk about the God that people say is who is not relevant today. She can talk to us about that God they say that he does not exist. They can, she can talk about that God who they say does not heal. He, oh yeah, they, she can talk about that God who say that, that, that God does not work miracles and she can look at them and say, well, you may believe that, but in my experience with him, I know he's a healer. I know he's a miracle worker. And somebody in here tonight, somebody in here tonight needs to know that God is on your side. And when God is on your side, he empowers you to have success. God is not a failure. There is no failure in him. I know that we sometimes feel that God uh, forgets about us. He never forgets about you. And sometimes you feel like, well, God, where were you when I was going through? The truth of the matter is that he probably would tell you that you didn't realize that the reason why you went through was because of him. Otherwise, your life would have ended at the beginning of your crisis. But because of him, you went through your crisis and you made it to the other side. So you got to learn how to thank God for the things that God is doing for you because God is blessing right now. Everybody say power. Second Corinthians, the 12th chapter and the ninth verse. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, would I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I'm talking about the Apostle Paul. He talked to God three times and said, I want you. I, I, I got this thorn, and I want you to take this thorn away. Uh, it, it, it's bothering me. I want you to take it away. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. I, there comes a time, watch now, there comes a time within your life when you're going through and you get tired of going through. You get tired of always carrying the heavy weight. You get tired of people saying it's going to be all right and it's never all right. You get tired of people saying, I know you're healed and yet, yet your body is wrecked with pain. You get tired of that. I know you do. I know you do. I know you do. And sometimes you ask God, God, when are you going to do something? When are you going to do it? God, they told me 14 years ago I'm going to be a millionaire and I still don't have $100 in my bank account. And so, God, when are you going to do something that all these people talked about all what you're going to do? When are you going to do it? Well, he says, perhaps you don't understand. 
about my grace. Yeah, my, you, you don't understand about my grace. First of all, my grace is sufficient for thee. Uh, I know you don't realize it, but my grace is sufficient for thee. And then there's something else that you don't understand. You see, you want to ride the high waves. You want to be on the mountain peak. You want to be able to be out there so outstanding that people can talk about who you are and where you've come from. But that's not where my strength is. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. In what you cannot do and what you are going through, that's when I'm strong. God has said, God has said, and so you know every once in a while, you have to understand perhaps you haven't gone low enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see you, you, you love the air in the mountain peak. But every once in a while, you need to come down into the valley. There aren't too many people who live on the mountain peak. The whole lot of folk live in the valley. And so you got to learn how to live in the valley and then scale the mountain. But he said, my strength is made perfect in weakness. And so then... Uh, the apostle Paul said, well, let me shut up. Let me close my mouth. And he said, most gladly. Therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. Yeah, it, 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 it's bad, but I'd rather glory in my infirmities uh, that the power, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Because if I have his power resting upon me, that's more than having the other stuff that I've been relying upon. Uh -huh. You don't need the plaudits of man. You don't need the praises of man. No, no, no. You need the power of God. If we're going to make it through this life, we need the power of God. When I look at the situations where people are walking in churches and, and shooting folk in churches, I'm just trying to tell you something. This is happening this is happening. Just like we're gathered in here right now, people are walking in churches like we're gathered now and taking out guns and shooting folk. Uh-huh. Yeah, they are, they are doing that. People are killing people almost every day, everywhere. You turn around, you can see somebody's losing their life, something is happening, something's been stolen, or whatever the circumstances may be. But I'm going to tell you this. That irrespective of what's going on in life and how things are, you need to understand the necessity of having the power of Christ to rest upon you. Now, I want to get into something right quick. Amen. Let me get into it. After the Holy Ghost comes, you shall have power. I want to thank God for the opportunity to have power periodically. Listen, I want to thank him for the opportunity of having power to rest upon me periodically. But there's a greater force than to just have him come when I'm going through. Thank you, God. I thank you for that. But that seems to me something better. So to have you come upon me like you did others in the Bible, and I appreciate them and how you came upon them. I thank you for being with David when he went up against the Goliath. I thank you for being with David when he went against the bear and the lion. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate the power that was with Daniel in the den. Of lions. I, 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 I appreciate that. I appreciate the power that was upon Samson. When, when Samson uh, had to slay all those people with the jawbone of an ass, I, 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 I appreciate that. That's, that's, good. that's good to know that power. And when you led the, the, the disciples out as far as the Bethany and you lifted up your hands and you blessed them, I appreciated that power. But God... When I read the Bible, I found that there was something else that was greater 
than having the power upon me. Because when they were all gathered together and they were with one accord, there came a sound as of a rushing mighty wind and filled the room where they were sitting. And there appeared upon them cloving tongues as a fire. But even the cloven tongues, thank God for cloven tongues, but that was not sufficient. And then they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. I'm telling you right now, in order to make sure that God is with you everywhere you go, you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And having the baptism of the Holy Ghost, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you will be able to succeed because that's where in lies your empowerment because you have him on the inside. I don't want a shake. And I don't want to do a rattle and roll. No, I, I, I don't want to tremble, but I want the very presence of Almighty God on the inside of me. And when I'm going through the test of my times, I want to be able to do what the Apostle Paul exhorted Timothy to do. He told Timothy, in times of trouble, in times of conflict, in times of adversity, in times of sickness, in times of distress, stir up the gift that's within you. And so I just want to be able to stir him up. Stir him up. Jesus said, if you believe on me, as the scripture has said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. The power of God will come out of you. Well, 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 well. I wonder is there anybody in the house who understands the necessity of having the power of God to work on the inside of you? Is there anybody in the house who wants the anointing of the Lord to be in your spirit? Ephesians 1 and 19 says, and I want you to understand and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, Lord, who believe according to the working of his mighty power. God's power is not weak. God's power is not ending, but God's power succeeds, and it is succeeding, and with Christ in your life, you can do what no other people can do because of the power of God. I'm asking the Lord, God, send the power. God, send the power. 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 Maybe you don't need power, but I want power. Power. Power in my spirit. Power in my mind. Power. Power in my home. Power in the church. Power in my neighborhood. Power. We need power. Power to walk right, power to talk right, power to live right, power to go forward, power over the enemy, power to tear down strongholds of the devil. Help me say power, oh power. Wait, my favorite scripture, and I'm finished. My favorite scripture 
in the New Testament, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think according to the power that works in us power it's really up to you whatever you want to do if you want to succeed just take the Lord along with you if you want to go forward just take God with you if you want to achieve highly take the Lord with you if you want to go through the test of your times with the assurance that God is with you all you need to do is tell the Lord Lord here am I here am I send me I'll go I'll go anywhere everybody say exceeding Come on, say exceeding Exceeding. greatness, Greatness. ongoing greatness, greatness. continuing greatness, greatness. rising greatness, greatness. striving greatness, greatness. onward, Onward. upward, Upward. unending, Unending. (laughs) exceeding greatness. He empowers our success. There's no way that you cannot achieve with God on your side. If you would all stand, I'd be most appreciative. Hallelujah. Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. When God is on your side and when God is in your heart, you have this relationship with him that you can say that I'm not bothered by anything that comes my way because what I know is he knows my name. He knows my name. Is there anybody who understands the importance of God knowing your name? Do you understand the importance of him knowing your name? He knows my name. Mm -hmm. You know my name. You know. You know my name. Oh. You know you walk with me. Oh, how you talk with me.
you're in the house tonight and you don't have a positive relationship with God, I want you to know that you can have wherever you are in the sanctuary. If you want Christ to come into your life, this last day and night of 2019, this last day and night of this decade, just raise your hand if you want Christ to come into your heart. You want him to come into your life. What a great time to give your heart to God and to say yes to him. Ooh. to announce the theme for 2020, God Empowers Our Success. Come on, one, two, three. God Empowers Our Success. Come on. God Empowers Our Success. One more time. God Empowers Our Success. Make it personal. God Empowers My Success. Come on. God Empowers right now. Give him praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Come on in. 
from where I listen. started from. Listen. Nobody told me. Listen. Listen. We've been singing, we have the victory. We've been saying it's done. God did it and all those things. The whole purpose of the Lord coming into our midst is to bless us. If we need healing to heal us, if we need deliverance to deliver us, whatever it is that we need, God is here. Hold the music just a minute. Hold the music just a minute. He's in here for purpose. And I don't want us to leave here without his purpose being fulfilled. Amen? And here's what I want you to do because I know all of us, we're thinking now, okay, it's after 12 and, and we, some of you all have miles be, to go before you sleep. And we're going to let you out so you can at least go down the block, wherever that is. Amen. <clears throat> but here's what I want us to do. I want us to grab the hand face to face with someone else. And this is what I want you to do. With faith, I want you to talk about your 2020 and the expectations that you have through God to achieve all for your life in 2020. I want you to express it to the person whose hands you're holding. I want you to Declare by faith that you're going to have it. I don't care how things are right now. I want you to declare it. All right? Begin to talk to that person now. Begin to talk to them. Listen, listen, if what you said, you believe in the accomplishment thereof, you believe that you can succeed in it, on this first day of 2020, I want you to praise God for that. God change things. I pray 
for you. You play for me. And watch God now, that was change a good phrase things. For people who think it might happen, but if you know it's going to happen, give God praise. You, you pray for me. Change things. Hey, hey. Watch God change things. Listen, listen to this. Listen to this. The Lord has called you to be a special vessel for him. And out of all of the things in life that you can become, God gives you the choice. You can say what it is that you want to be. God says you will be. There's one requirement that's an inclusive one. Somebody bring her and that's an inclusive one. And what's inclusive is, thank you so much. What's inclusive is, he says, tell her not to bend, not to bow, not to compromise, but to stand firm in what he has given to you. He says, you know that people don't expect you to be a chosen vessel of the Lord. They expect something else out of you. But he says, you're going to prove them wrong and he's going to show what he would do with a young person. He's given to you the personality and the equipment to excel. There's a young lady out in California. She's a part of a family only thing she did was have a mixture of things cosmetically and now she's a billionaire. Her last name is Kardashian. It may not be that na now. She think her, her father I think was Ren or whatever his name was. So God has chosen you to be a vessel. And there's nothing that he cannot do for you. And he stopped me in the midst of all of what we were doing so I can say that to you. That means he, he's going to allow that to happen if you do what he tells you to do. All right? You can have this much success or you can have a wide world of success. That choice is up to you. Amen? Give God praise. Give God praise. Amen. We're we're getting ready to go home. There are some there 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 are or there is um, some food on the other side. Um, I'm going to flip a couple of um, pancakes, flapjacks, or whatever they call them over there myself after I kind of, you know, got to get your hands and sanitize and all that kind of stuff. But I'm going to do that over there, but that's going to be over there. 
I was asking my office, and, I'm, and I appreciate you all standing. I was asking my office, um, Bishop, you usually ask for a first day offering, New Year offering. And that's true. And, and he asked me, he says, has God given you an amount? I said, no, he has not. And he says, well, I just want to be sort of prepared. Now, people at this church know that I have been known to ask for small amounts. And I've been known to ask for. Amen. I heard a male voice back there. Who, who was that that was saying amen so that? Oh, right there. All right. Thank you, brother. Okay. Uh, but here's what I want you to do. I'm going to pray. And when I pray, I want you to come out of your pew area and lay the gift on the altar. Amen. This is what I feel led to ask of you. Amen. And that is $20. Everybody say 20. Now, if you don't have it, don't worry about it because we're not talking to people who don't have. Everybody may not give the same thing, but everybody can give something. And as soon as you have that $20, I'm going to pray, and then you bring it and place it here. If you don't have it, please don't worry about it. Amen? Thank you. Father, in Jesus' name, your blessings upon everyone who will come. Sometimes, Lord, it's the very simple things that we do in obedience to you that bring about the greatest blessings. And so now let the people know that my ask is not just something that's perfunctory, but that it has meaning and purpose, and that you will bless their personal economy even beyond that which you will because of their tithe and their offering that they give. It's in your name we pray and give praise. Thank God. Amen. Just those who are going to do it, just come and lay it on the altar right quickly. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We appreciate everyone who's come. Those of you who are visiting for the first time, we thank you for coming and sharing with us in this service. We invite you to come back and be with us. We're going to have a great service here on um, Sunday. There will not be service here on tomorrow. I know it's Wednesday. I regularly schedule Bible study. There will not be Bible study here on tomorrow. Also, I would like to say while you're coming that the first Saturday meeting of leadership meeting that we normally would have, we're not having the first Saturday leadership meeting because we are going to the funeral in Mississippi on Friday. And it might be a little cumbersome to go over there and then we get back here and do that. So we're gonna do two things on the second Saturday. On the second Saturday, we will have our leadership meeting and then um, we will have the, um, we will have uh, the, volunteers dinner I think that's that's what we're calling a banquet or something like that okay now in the event that we won't have the leadership meeting on the second Saturday we do know we are going to make all of the appointments of positions on the fourth Sunday so don't be all nervous about the fourth the second Saturday if we don't have it all we will do is we will have the installation service of leaders on the fourth Sunday, and we do that on the fourth Sunday night. Amen? All right. Now, I asked a few minutes ago, and I, I, it was difficult to tell because of who was here, but those of you who are visiting for the very first time, uh, would you stand so we may acknowledge you and thank God for you if this is your very first time? Come on. Thank you so very much. We appreciate you so, so greatly. Okay. Um, yeah. Deacons, you may uh, gather uh, from wherever you are.
Thank you much. You know, you're so nice. You didn't just all just walk out the door when we were doing that. I appreciate it. We're all going home now. One more time for this band. One more time for the choir, the praise team. Praise. Yeah. Praise dancers. And I, I don't want to call them what other people call them. They call them the old women. They're not old women, they're, but, they're <laughs> but for the mothers. God empowers our success. I think, I think some are out there, amen. I think there's some out there, if you want one of these, God empowers our success. Now, I don't want to put anybody on the spot. I don't want to put anybody on the spot. But now, if we have somebody in here who's willing to admit that you need an extra large, I'll give it to you. I am not coming to you. You got, well, I'll tell you what, no, I, 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 it's already decided. It's already decided by somebody else. Mother, anybody have quadruple surgery and come in here? You, you have to get it, mother. You have to get it. <laughs> now, now, mother, I want you to know that my wife held up her hand and she wanted it and I gave it to you, mother. I just want you to know. I want you to know. Now, she loves you. She loves you. She loves you. But we got plenty of them out there. Amen. May we stand, please. Do what? I'm a, I'm a 10. Oh, okay. Somebody asked the question, how much they cost $10? Amen. You can buy, buy, you can buy, you can buy a dozen. All right, God bless you. Father, in Jesus' name, we're thankful for you. We're thankful for your presence, and we thank you for the empowerment. Bless this congregation as we leave out of here. We go in your strength, and we go in your love. And we thank you that we're able to do so. Now, we ask you to bless the food on the other side and the partakers thereof in your name. Your grace and love go with us now and forever. And all the people of the Lord said, Amen. Amen. God bless you.